Thank you. Uh, John, just double check with the pronunciation of my name before the presentation, highlighting one of the key themes of this conference, human concerns. And um, yeah, so my name is Jin Tai Jiang, and I'm currently studying at University of Bristol. Today I want to talk some of my PhD findings on um, translators' lives, working condition, and welfare, particularly associated with um, digitized platform. You can also take that as um, the, the impact from social media. So before I jump into the detail, um, this is some takeaway for today's presentation. In this presentation, I will try to um, demonstrate how fan subbers in China have been using social media as essential tools for their uh, fan subbing activity. And moreover, um, I will explain why, in my opinion, fan subbing is not an activity without income, although it's being highly non-profitable. That is to say, I'm focusing on fan subbers network in the digital environment. So I believe to begin with, it's worthwhile to um, drop a few lines on the Bilibili. Um, you can take Bilibili and understand it as a Chinese version of YouTube. It is a user-generated content platform com coming with uh, very popular mobile applications. So users in China have been uploading their own content on this platform, and many of them has actually gone viral. Um, and in terms of its high tolerance for uh, cultural diversity, even the subculture like LGBTQ content in the post-socialism China, it, is, it has been referred to as a heterotopia in China. And in this heterotopia, um, users have been shaping their own identity while also affecting um, others. And to move on, um, what I have found on this heterotopia is an emergence of new subtitling genre, which, is, um, which are vlogs and streamings. So this is actually a screenshot I generated from a Bilibili after typing in uh, with the keyword of subtitle and vlogs. So what we can see here is we don't see many celebrities, well, except for one or two like Leonardo Messi, uh, but more of ordinary peoples like college students from Japan or um, some uh, or Korean girls suffering from um, cancer, but really getting um, like positive uh, to their uh, to hit to her experience. Also, um, we we're seeing someone teaching others how to study for 14 hours straight without resting, which I highly doubt about. Um, so. Uh, so we're seeing, we're seeing a diverse content here, but there's one thing in common among these content that they, are being, they have been translated by ordinary users as well. So you can tell from the different uh, usernames or IDs under these um, videos that um, it has been translated by more than one group or person that is, it was created from the user, uh, by the user, and for the user. And the lives of these translators or users have been studied previously, I have to admit that. Um, and moreover, it's not the first uh, PhD program that has adopted a methodology from anthropolo anthropological studies. Um, it has been fruitful from interpreting these uh, users' lives from a micro perspective. However, I believe uh, mine has its own significance in starting with those working uh, with non-commercialized goods, that is, uh, social media like TikToks or Twitter uh, posts, uh, instead of a Netflix series or Hollywood movies. And they have been active on a social platform rather than in a relatively closed uh, online forum. So what I'm really seeing here is a social turn in today's fan subbing in China. What we used to have at the very initial stage of fan subbing was American fans sub subtitling for a Japanese anime, um, and that's what I have been mentioned the, the the subtitling with commercialized content. But uh, in on Bilibili, uh, ordinary are uh, ordinary peoples are subtitling for others that may not be considered as a commercialized activity, but more of a cultural or social activity. 
um, and I got this kind of inspirations from the French and our school and British cultural studies. Uh, these two schools have been highlighting the importance of uh, paying attention to the ordinary people, uh, but not necessarily the elites. So on the one hand, French honor school tends to interpret history from the perspective of economics instead of politics, which tells more about people's lives, such as what they, uh, what people are buying. And in terms of British cultural studies, Stuart Hall and other authors have been studying British uh, youth culture by simply looking at what young people are wearing, uh, what they are uh, listening, um, and what kind of place they like to hang out with uh, after school. So uh, that brings me to my main research question here. That is to explore the significance of social media in a highly digitized translation activity. And moreover, I believe like many other objects on this planet, social media doesn't come in vacuum. That is to say, it has its own um, impact on fan suburbs. Uh, but it's not just transparency by using these uh, social medias. And last but not least, I actually get the very last question from a line um, said by Joker in the Batman theory. He said, if you're really good at something, never do it for free. Just um, before he showed, I'm going to make this pencil disappear scene. Um, where I, I've been thinking this because it has been uh, verified by many scholars that fan subs um, are, can be really high quality and even sometimes so-called better than the professional made one. But meanwhile, these fan subbers have been working as volunteers, that is to say, without any materialized incomes for more than decades. decades. So to me, there must be something that lies behind this kind of activity online. and. Um, and in pursuit of these research, uh, answering these research questions, I have adopted the netnographic research uh, for this one. Um, it's a relatively new um, ethnography-like study method uh, that was um, designed by coordinates. And just like any other anthropological methods, it was based heavily upon uh, the online observation toward participants and the context they stayed in. And moreover, if there's any mutual uh, shaping of impacts between the two. Meanwhile, I'm trying to immerse myself into the field. That is to say, not trying to, not only working as a fan suburb by myself, but also uh, communicating with these uh, lovely fan suburbs. Uh, instead of using the term in interview, I highly uh, insisted on communication because I want to guarantee there's a high level of naturalness that um, remain during the process. So instead of telling um, the, the fan suburbs that you are being in a four-year PhD program that might um, change my life, um, I'm just um, trying to let them know we're friends and um, you can say whatever you want without too much worries. Uh, but meanwhile, I, I ethically, I have told them that what you said might be part of the study. And it's, I really appreciate that they still decided to share their uh, thing, thoughts with me. So from this slide on, we are moving on to the finding part. The very first finding I have here is social media have been acting as the entry for fan um, subbing. Um, and I will go on to the, the bikini picture later. Trust me, I won't leave that. Um, it's it's actually the uh, recruiting posters that been functioning as the beginning point of fan subbing. Um, so these recruiting posters, its work is being spread out on the social media, and uh, users get chances to see them and see if they are qualified for subtitling. And meanwhile, they're really eye-catching. I actually know the one who designed the one on the left, and uh, he said. Considering most fan suburbs are teenagers that doesn't have to work, it's uh, they it's only natural for them to sp uh, get attracted for this kind of um, unconventional job wanted posters. And he uh, purposely has uh, put the label uh, "You are wanted" in the lower part of the girl's body. And just but to me, this is just treating fan translators as flesh and bones. 
um, thinking that oh they must be interested by this and that. And to move on, I also sensed a, a sense of greediness from the leader, uh, from the job requirements. So. Um, if you want to work as a translator, it says here you have to gain at least seven in IELTS test. And if you want to be a proofreader, you need to gain eight for the same test and preferably living in an English speaking country, which is uh, equal to um, getting into Oxford and Cambridge. Uh, so to me, it's, it's like leaders of fan subbing groups, it's just like um, leader of corporates out there. They really want to hire. Um, the, the, the smart people are those who are capable of doing their jobs. Um, and in the end, if you still decided to join in the group, you can always find the contact information, be it the group number or the QR code, to join in the group. After you have joined in the group, it's the first thing you do might not be start translating, but start but building trust among others. You either have, have to uh, pass an exam for subtitling or you have to pass the exam for norm studying, including but not limited to no cursing in the group or no political issue discussed online. Because um, I, according to my knowledge, someone has talked about political sensitive issues and the whole group just gone like uh, in one night, which is really painful for many um, fan subbers. And some scholars have been reporting a self-exposure ritual um, in, the, in, in entering these groups. Not necessarily posting a selfie, but uh, telling everybody, everybody else what you're doing. Are you a student or not, etc. All of these are designed to build trust on a virtual uh, society. So here what we can see is after someone has joined the group earlier, everybody's just um, coming out and say uh, welcome. Um, to the new new joiner. Um, to move on, uh, social media has also been used as a, a method to show respect to the content creator. So what we have here is uh, standardized uh, direct message templates for asking asking for permissions from the original content creators on YouTube. That is to say, fan subbers are translating with respect to the. Um, also, should I say, and even and if we are lucky enough to get the permission, we still always try to attach the original uh, link in the Bili on Bilibili. Um, so in this case, it's more of a promotion rather than piracy, which is uh, long haunted fan subbing in the past. Uh, the second finding I have here is a uh, digital media has been functioning as spaces for online teamwork. Uh, which really boost up the productivity and subtitling speed. Um, on the right, left hand side, we can see a uh, shared worksheet, on, and on the right, there's a uh, net disk. So the combination of these two are functioning um, as warehouse for fan subbings in China. Say if you want to be a proofreader of the second video, you just need to type your ID into this little box. And similarly, you might not want to be the translator of this one because it has already been occupied. And whatever you need, you can always find from the subtitling software to the sources. Um, you can always find it in the net disk, which has been organized by some expert in the group, forming a really um, useful file management system. And last but not least, the, the third finding is about uh, publishing these fan subs. So one thing that distinguishes Bilibili from YouTube is this kind of uh, bullet screen system. In Japanese, it is called Danmu, Danmuku. Um, so it's a kind of common system that allows uh, audience to post their um, comments simultaneously with their watching experience. So this kind of comment would fly from one side of the screen to, to another end. And some of them are really um, encouraging, say either expressing the appreciation to the fan subber or pointing out the room for improvement. However, there are also toxic comments here saying that you, you just suck and my grandmother did better than you. So <laughs> because it's, it's anonymous, you don't you never find who posts that. And this this working condition. Um, has are debatable right now by many scholars. So on the one hand, we have uh, Jorge Diaz-Centas uh, 
referring this kind of subtitling with Dan Mu as uh, carnivals, where, which he borrowed from Bakhtin's carnival theory, um, where he emphasized that with Dan Mu, everybody can, can generate subtitles on the screen, so the boundaries between translators and uh, viewers have been blurred. Um, and everybody's just hyped, which is great as a form of entertainment. But on the other hand, um, Zhang and Kasani has shown how Zhang Mu can make things gone too far. So here we can see almost every Zhang Mu here is pointing to this character saying the murder is him at the very first beginning of a detective show, um, making it really frustrating for whoever made it or um, trying to enjoy the show. Therefore, uh, further in fact, the views and likes the video receive. So it's really a double-edged thing by working under the Stanmu system. And going back to answer the question of uh, what fan subbers have been getting from this, uh, from their fan subbing activities, I think uh, Braju's social capital theory can be a really um, appropriate theoretical framework to explain this. All these welcome events and working as a team has been creating a sense of belonging to internet users. They feel, they, they, they are, they feel themselves are needed, they feel themselves are welcome and part of the community, even sometimes getting harassed by the others, they still uh, developing their um, citizenship online. So. Some of them even have developed on offline relationship after finding out they live in the same city or uh, they live really near to each other. So this kind of uh, invisible income or feeling of uh, being part of the society can be one of the great resources uh, fan subbers get from subtitling for free. So in conclusion, um, in this presentation, I have shown how fans are using social media to socialize themselves as well as their works um, with others, either by joining the group or pushing them their works to uh, virtual uh, audiences. So I think 50 years earlier, you need at least a certificate or a diploma in translation to, to achieve this. But in today's China, you just need um, like five minutes to register on a social media and then you can almost find everything you need to become a so-called translator. Um, it has a, this one still has a limitate on the time span and sample size saying um, I have just started eight months ago and um, not been working with uh, fan subbing groups with other uh, themes and uh, with with more time and more sample coming in, I'm seeing more themes emerging from the, the story of these fan suburbs, such as the competition between different fan groups or insider groups, etc. And many thanks for your patience, and, and that's it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, for that very interesting paper. Now, does anyone have a question? Um, yes. I thank you for this. This is very interesting. Um, personally, for me, I was a fan subber when I was a teenager. That was a while ago. Um, it was also in Brazil, and it was also illegal because it was piracy. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting right now, as a, a sometimes when there's calls for for subtitlers, yep. I ha I've had experience with that. But all of my experience is completely invisible, and um, years and years and years of free wo wo labor to have done the subtitling stuff. Yep. It's just com I cannot prove it. Mm -hmm. Not only because it's illegal, but because it's not anywhere to be. It's not palpable. So I found it very interesting that the Billy Billy has this um, where, where it shows who the translator yep. is, and you could like if you wanted to put, build a portfolio, you could uh, put that out. But I just wanted you to, to comment on that kind of weird, kind of dark slash invisible. Um, and, and how did you get to find these translators? I know that they are accredited, but like, how do you insert yourself in that community and and to be able to to do the research? Yeah. Uh, thanks for your question because. Uh, as I've mentioned at the very beginning of this presentation, uh, Billy Billy is becoming um, a very viral place for for teenagers or 
basically anyone who's um, trying to watch videos on their phones. So it was during the first quarantine that I just do nothing and just sc scrolling on my phone. Then I have find out that they're really a kind of phenomenal thing, fan subbing things happening here. So yeah, so my answer to the question it was based on my personal experience. Um, yeah, I hope that answers the question. Thank you. Thank you for a very interesting presentation. Um, I'm really interested because I'm also doing ethnography in a Pennsylvania community, but uh, in the French context. And so uh, I was wondering, how did they like let you in? How could you convince them to like let you observe them? Mm -hmm. And like they knew it was for research, so um, how did they react to that? Were some of them annoyed or against you doing research on them? Mm -hmm. How did it happen? Because in the French context, it would not have been possible. They were not open at all to being observed or answering to my questions or anything. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah, thank you for your question. Uh, so in terms of the formal question, um, I was able to secure my position inside the group by working really hard, just proving to them um, I'm trying to be part of you. Uh, despite I might have other purposes as well, but um, that in a fan subbing machine, they are really want to, they are eager to gain likes and retweets. So if you can prove that you're useful to them, they will. I, I believe, at least in my case, they they let me stay. Um, and for the second question, that um, they were pretty generous for me to stay in the group, but. Yeah, inevitably they they have some reaction after um, I have said, well, you might be part of the official thing, uh, because um, I I was able to soothe these kind of concern by showing by being transparent about like showing every uh, thing I'm about to write and uh, making sure that I'm using their IDs rather than their IP address or anything in their real life. And last but not least is um, yeah yeah I can definitely see why why they might refuse to being exposed uh, because it's in a really strict censorship context. But again, it, as as long as you have um, proved them is really ethical and just soothing them, it will be fine. Yeah, thank you. Any other questions? So thank you for your presentation. Um, thank you. I have, so I was struck by a couple of things. One was the poster, which I hope, I, I, if you don't mind, I'll ask a question about that in a second. But the other was the, um, you mentioned that the bar is low to get into fan subbing. You know, that all you basically need is to make uh, a profile on, you know, on a social media site and it's something you can get into. But it sounds as if there's, that there are actually further bars beyond that, right? I mean, the IELTS score, you know, those are high IELTS yeah. scores which would be beyond the reach of many of many people. And also the skill in kind of negotiating with potential content creators, you know, the way you approach people, I mean, that takes considerable sort of address and social skills. So, yeah, I just wanted to sort of come back to your question. I mean, do you really feel that the bar is low or is it a case that there are different communities on a sort of center periphery basis in terms of who's doing the most interesting work or who's doing the most productive, who are the most productive Groups or yeah, uh, yeah. Thank you, verse. Um, so yeah, so so um, according to the question, I think I really have to rethink about the wording um, of uh, it's easy these days to become a translator or fan server. Uh, but uh, there's one point, if possible, I want to defend myself is I'm just listing the the best fan subbing groups and their requirements. But in real life, I have seen someone claim to be a fan server, but only using machine translation or uh, AI generating subtitles, which they they just they really the, the bar was low. I was I was just trying to say um, there's a lot of happening uh, these days with the help of technologies and their self identity claiming them to be translators. So yeah, definitely would uh, reconsider about that. Thank you. My, just if I can have a quick follow-up question. That poster, the poster on the left. Oh yeah. Um, it, it's. I was just surprised because most of the fan servers I think I've 
met him or come across him, which aren't very many, are women. And I was mm -hmm. just wondering, is that not a poster that's sort of designed uh, yeah. for straight guys? I don't know. I mean, I mean, <laughs> no, uh, or, or is that, in fact, a poster which is, will, will, it, will appeal to anybody who's interested in anime? I, I'm just I'm curious. Yeah. Um, it's a really good question. Um, so you're actually giving me a chance to uh, justify myself, justify myself um, because I'm not trying to be uh, like I, I, I'm I'm not trying to say like fan subbers. There's like male dominant things, but uh, I get the conclusion based upon the the sex uh, distribution or making up proportions from a uh, Billy Billy. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying that statement because uh, more ma males are the dominant users of this kind of social media. And I really, I failed to uh, cite figures to, to prove that. And thanks for mentioning that out. Um, so yeah, uh, and, and, and it is a character. It is the one we're about to fans up. It's, it's, she's a virtual YouTuber that uh, she actually Showing everybody, this is her character um, with a real person behind the scene and speaking all these things. So yeah, they have been using the fandom objectivity to attract people. That sounds like well, the rich material to me. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Inside.